Good morning, brothers and sisters, family and friends. We are going to begin with our praise and worship. Brother Shadrach is not here, but I'm going to be in the music. So I'm going to ask we have two minutes to do that. Be here with your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Be here with your presence. Oh God. 
I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth and after my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh I will see God I myself will see him with my own eyes I am not another listen I tell you a mystery we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. We are all death is your victory where or death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to god he gives us 
the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Please remain standing and go to the opening hymn on your program. It is well with my soul. Thank you. 
president of the Jamaica West District of Nazarene Churches will be coming to open and pray for us. The Lord our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in this time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land. Eternal Father, to you be the honor, to you be the glory, to you be the praise. We rejoice in the fact that your mercies, they are new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. As we congregate to celebrate the life of the dear departed. In this moment of mixed feeling, we still lift up your name and we praise you. Because we know you are that friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And that Lord God, day by day, with each passing moment, strength we will find to meet our trials here as we trust in our father's wise bestowment we will have no cause for worry or for fear because you you whose heart is kind beyond all measure will give unto each day what you need best so we pray that your presence will fill this house that you will be with us lord god through every item on the program as we reflect, as we go through remembrance and offer tributes, special items, Lord God, we pray that to your glory, all things will be done decently and in order. We call upon you now, Lord God Most High, to do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may now be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on again, lift your hand and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time, your effort, and your company wherever you came from today to join us in this Thanksgiving service for Brenda and her son, Emily. George Williams. Thank you for coming. We know that today is a busy day. It is a Saturday. And it is very close to back to school. You have many things that you could have been involved in today. But you have decided to join us in this very mournful and difficult service. We thank you for coming and we want you to know that we really do appreciate your, your company. I always say that funerals are like partners. You throw your hand. Every Jamaican know that. And you get your job. Amen? Brenda, would have been to many funeral services before. That was a time when he and Henley would have been throwing their hand, going there and going there and going all over the place. Funeral services. Today is their day. Amen? And those of us who have come today to join them and to be a part of this funeral service, you know what you're doing? You are throwing your hand. Amen? Amen? And one day very soon and very late because 
all of us will be going this way one day. Amen? Amen. So we too very soon will be getting our draw when our time comes. Thank you. God bless you. I want you to enjoy yourself in the presence of the Lord today because we tend to have a good time in spite this is a funeral service. Sorry, we know that the time is very, very hot. Everybody is kind of funny. And we know that the heat is not just in Lockwood. <laughs> All right? Anywhere you go, now you're boiling. True? Anywhere. Anywhere on the planet. In fact, they have told us that this year is the hottest year in history. Oh, my God. So, it is very, very hot. And we know the church is a little bit very small. We hope that if you help us, the next time you come, um, we will have a bigger church to accommodate all of us. Thank you very much. We're also going to ask that you that you be patient with us today a little bit because you know that the funeral service is two in one. All right? So it may go a little bit longer than we normally would on a funeral service because we're taking children on both sides. So we're going to ask that you, yes, that you, that you help us. Just try and be as disciplined as you can. If you have to go outside, please do so with, with dignity and with reverence. And, um, and help us to go through this as quickly as we can with your participation. God bless you. We're going to ask for the first lesson. We're going according to the, to the program. First lesson by Chrisanna Williams and Shana Cope, cousins and grandnieces. Then we're going to take selection and tribute from Nutrition Products Limited. And then we're also going to take a selection tribute from Marvia Horton, cousin. And we're going all the way down to second lesson by Renato Vassal, nephew, because we're going to ask that you come in this order. And after that, um, Deaconess Maxwell will be coming and she will be taking the program down. And we'll also ask some of this to help us to partake and to participate in the program as we go through. I also want to welcome before you come all the pastors and ministers and the men and women of God who have joined us from wherever you came from today. We want to welcome you and we thank God that you made time out to be here today. We also want to give thanks and, 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 and to our political representatives who are here today. Um, MP is here and we want to say thank you sir for your for your presence and counselor as well is is with him. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome everyone. Put your hands together. Come on man. I just heard a few persons. I'm asking that you just make one welcome, one big welcome. Give yourself and give everybody in this house a big round of applause. Thank you. First lesson. Please use the lectern that is provided right at the front. that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, then also we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18 and last. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, Yeah. 
Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's continue with our program. We have remembrance by Sister Maxwell. Sister Prim. Brenda Lynn Williams. Come, Sister Maxwell. We're waiting on you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. All the time. Please just be with me. One of the most precious gifts God has given us is the ability to remember. There are plenty of There are plenty of hurts and disappointments in life that we should forget. But good memories become a treasure chest of priceless reminders of relationships shared and joys experienced. A songwriter penned the words of this song. But I will just quote a few lines. There's just one thing, dear Lord, I ask. Don't let me leave behind an unfinished task. I ponder these lines and I said to myself, so, and the Lord no make me leave behind an unfinished task. When sometimes some of us as Christians are so lack of physical in our attitude towards virgin. We lack commitment, compassion, empathy not enamored with anyone of low degree. Only close friends and persons in rank and file they give good service to. We are selfish. We are disrespectful. We criticize each other. Let us do our duty as a Christian should. Serve the Lord with gladness. Others next. And yourself, ourselves, last of all. If we do not upgrade our service, make amends, we will leave unfinished tasks behind us. Amen. Brenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brenda. Brenda was a sister friend. She was my traveling partner to various church functions. Sometimes it's just the two of us. Oftentimes one would ask, Ask me for my sister, but they see me a sister. Sometimes I would tell them, she's not my sister, but my friend. Then I stop telling them, she's not my sister. She said, because we call her high. But if you are called high, I'm high. <laughs> Even Terry, Muchi, and Pansy mistook me for Brenda. Sometimes, Muchi would say, Miss Ma, I feel named that to me. They think of me. Terry came out of with her grandmother the other day and Mommy! I was standing on the gate talking to Brenda. She lost to Brenda. I said, yeah, yeah, idiot. She said, me think I need mommy. Where mommy then? She said, she's over there, I'm talking to her. Even pants. You know, I don't say it's no. <laughs> Sometimes Brenda, you know when she starts to our sister to do it. She would ask me, like if she heard that at church, what is going on? She said, Maxwell, that's what you call me. You are carrying me? She said, no, we can't carry it here. She said to me, apart from Pansy and my children, I will go with sickness. She had a passion for Mochi, oh God. Her heart beat. She would say, Maxwell, where is Mochi there? and then the crying star. She was also concerned for the children of the community, especially those who used to come to church. She would say, pray for them. One of her songs, come on. In her hair days, she was fun to be around. She was caring and kind. 
she said she wanted to be a nurse. But, you know, it never really materialized. When Brenda said some little things at times, you cannot help but crack up. You marry a crack up man, that's Brenda. Crack up, because she's like that. Once when she was in the hospital, I visited her. I saw her coming from the bathroom with Talia, assisting her. She said, we tell the girls to meet me one candle by myself. But Talia wouldn't let you happen. Because one at a time she fell, because she tried to come off the bed, and I said, the doctor said she must stay in her bed. She don't want to use, she did not use the bedpan. She won't go back to her. In every person on the face of this earth, there is good and there is bad. My friend was no exception. Obstinacy was one of her names. She once told me, fine, bro. I saw this fear, and we can't change. I told her, you can. But she held on to that stubbornness for a good while. Whenever she comes to church, and most of the corner seats over there are occupied, I always sit at the corner of that front bench, not that long one, the next one. And then she would come, say, me, I sit on beside you today. Say, no problem. She always wanted to beside me. Even that Sunday, before her passing, we sat together, hug, and you know she loved, dance. Music and dancing were her signature pieces. Her testimonies at times hilarious. Mm. Many times when I visited her, we would talk for hours. Little things she would tell me. Girl, I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. In the latter part of June, I got to Photoshop. Sorry. In the latter part of June, this one cut me. I cut a bunch of banana. That's after Brenda died, you know. She always come to me because she loves banana porridge. And she always asks me for banana. So sometimes I would give her a whole bunch because I don't eat green banana. And sometimes I would cook. And guess what? I cut the banana and start cutting it up here, you know. Put the one side. The honey has to bring down. Lord Jesus, look here. Bring down the lid. I cut banana for bring down. That's not what I used to. Grief is not a process. It's a lifelong weight on our heart and our soul. Let us always try to act just and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. God prunes us in different ways to draw our attention to him. Anytime we need to change direction, God stands ready to help us. If we encounter hindrances in turning around, all we need to do is ask for divine assistance. It is never too late to say yes to the Lord's command. Uchi. Uchi. Miss Ma. That's his name. Miss Ma. And she would give me a hug. I would have a magnetic smile. I don't think you sketch a part. A kind hearted, willing, and hard working soul is at rest. Uchi. They rest from their labor and their work do follow them. To the immediate family, everyone, what is it? Teresa, Terry, Natalia, Tali, Raheem, Tyrell, Silvano, aka me. Van, Pat, which is soul made. Be strong. Put on the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against anything the devil tries. 
Love each other. Support each other positively. Pansy, counselor, and caretaker. Sing. Rest in peace, my sister friend, my son, my nephew, until that great getting up morning when we shall rise to meet our Savior who will eventually be our church. Thank you. That was Sister Maxwell. So we can ask Maxwell will continue. We'll have a selection in dance from Tiandra Bruce and Chastity Johnson. Followed by tribute and remembrance from Pansy Bruce, sister and aunt. Come in this order, please. Please don't keep the people waiting with this heart. Amen. Tiandra and Chastity. I'm going to tell you, 
if none of them die out. When me tell them, say, me not feel good, but me have a done wash my spit sheet and ask my supervisor if he can send me home. Come here, Lord, doctor. I'm going to the office and ask my supervisor. And he said, yeah, man, go on. That was around 10 30. I mean, see, bro, man, as we go to the road, he said, bro, man, I have a glass of video. He said, I'm going to log on. I said, yeah. When I catch a log on, I take my bag and hide. Everybody, when I know, say, I will see me a pass through. I'm a glass of video. When we go in the machine and draw the money and come out, crossing the road, I say, you know, say, I'm not going to get that kind of money. Come in a sick, you know. Me don't sick. Me go in my yard and I come up. Lie on the bed and fast asleep. Because I was planning to go by my daughter. I don't get that. Me sleep, sleep, sleep. Wake up and ready for go away. I walk out of the road and see print. And I say, print up. Me go down and eat up. So come back, just over the yard. Do you say, yeah. see Mikey, I come now and jump in a Mikey bus. Catch up my sister, yeah, and listen. Come here, go and in and wear. You see them over there, I make steel, and I say, Boy, see, tell Brenda, say, me soon come tomorrow morning, and they start laughing at me. And then we reach the Gelly with Liam. Boy, see, call me. I'm not bothered, I'm not bothered. Yeah. But I catch the Gelly with Liam, and boy, see, call me. Boy, to just choke me. When he said to me, say, Pansy, you look like your sister dead up here. I said, what do you say? And he said it again. He just stamped me for two times and I make it worse. And ball out, make it a friend. And I said, awa, awa. And I said, bring that in, turn back. And I come. And I come to my office, I come to my office. That is why.
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the way There's a place up there for people like you
they are not anything attribute from our we take a tribute from our MP, Mr. George Wright. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much. First, let me acknowledge all the pastors in the house. Um, we have Pastor Birch. We have also Pastor Knight and uh, many pastors. We also have here with me my counselor caretaker for the Pittsfield Division, Mr. Junior Clark. And uh, just want to acknowledge each and everyone here celebrating the life of a dear brother and a sister. Um, first, let me extend my condolences to the Williams family. It is not an occasion where we see both mother and son going at the same time. So for the family members, I just want to say that God never gives you more than what you can bear. And uh, I know you are grieving at this time to lose their loved ones and uh, you know i was checking here and uh, the date because the bible speaks about your your tenor here on earth which is three score and ten but when i check their tenor here on earth i see one is 59 and one is 39. The mother, Williams, Brenda Lynn is 59. And uh, then the son, George, is 39. I want to say to my brothers and sisters that have no respect of persons. So we are here today to celebrate the life they live. But we have to say to ourselves that we could be next. So just to encourage you all, you know, to ensure that when our time comes, we too want to say here with a true and living God. And we must worship Him in spirit and in truth so that we can live to see Him when He comes. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I've been to many funerals. In fact, since I noticed from about 2012, 13, 14, coming up, I've been attending numerous funerals. In fact, I think the morgue is full now, Pastor. The morgue is full. But we have to give God thanks. Every day you woke up, give God thanks. And uh, the Bible speaks about love. And they said you must love your brothers and sisters just how as you love yourself. So if you love your brother and sister, you won't hurt them. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of killing, senseless, senseless killing. 
taking place here in Westmoreland and it pains my heart but people of God who are living I'm talking to the living now that we need to discourage illegal activities we need to say to our sons and our daughters if I touch you on your toe and you feel hurt I'm sorry but don't take it out in your own hands put yourself in jail or in the morgue so the word is love my brothers and sisters the word is love and you know we have to show each and every each other love um, tell you the truth it is not easy but let me move on a little bit for the people who are you know living up here in um, Shudbury Lago your member of parliament is working too I am working for the people and I know a lot of people might be saying that I'm not seeing you but trust me I have to keep the fire so I have to go elsewhere. But what I'm certain of is that you've been getting the representation that you have been asking for and you have been waiting for for such a long time. So, Pastor, you love the road, don't you? I want to see you get a bridge that costs $50 million. So we are doing uh, the work of the people. And that is nevertheless. You know, things are happening. Um, let me ask, is there any persons here? Because the government has many programs for your people. And uh, there's a program called the LIFT program. That just towards person leaving high school. Six feet and six farmers. If I can get two from Shrewsbury Lang, would that be grateful? Then you just need to have three subjects to include maths and English. So if you want to go on the link program, you can get in touch with me at my office. Also for those who are going to university, we have grants for you all. So those that are going to university, colleges, high school, we have no money, new money. So you can get in touch with me at my office. My office is right behind the police station in Sablama. So once again, we are working for the people. So not to cut out what we are about today, we are here to celebrate the life of Miss Williams and young Williams there. But to the family members, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. I know it is a very hard road time now for you all. But God says that he will not give you more than what you can bear. But I know the people are praying and I am praying and the church is praying for you all. Even at this time. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Wright. Hallelujah. Thanks much. We'll be taking the offering at this time. And um, I'm going to ask Sister Curlew and some other family members to do this. On your hymn, we are anchor hold in the storms of life. When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, as we call it, our feet. And before we go, um, I'm going to ask Sister Marva Dove to ask God's blessing 
a new offering. And for the blessing of the offering. So that they will, they will give more. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, you said in your word, in everything we should give thanks. Father, at times it is hard, but Lord, when we remember your word, you said in everything give thanks. And Father, we are giving you thanks this afternoon. Father God, we pray for strength today. Lord, we need your strength, strength like no other. And Father, as we are about to give to your cause, Father, we pray that Lord, we will give and give. And Father God, in our giving, we will remember to love, love until there is just no more love. Lord, cover us under your blood today. Lord Jesus, we pray that, Lord, you'll be our shield and our guide today. Lord, we leave everything in your hands. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, you bless your offering today as we say thanks. Amen. 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 Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold, their wings of strife. When the strong tides lift and the cables trail, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have gathered and peace the storm to save us the joy by the billows roll.
ought to know. All right? Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know.
next verse um, to Boise. And recently, the children and further family. The 13th of March, Sister Brenda and Huntley and Boise was at my mother. 100th birthday. And I did not know that it would be the last hope that I would hug them together. But thank God, amidst it all, though it was inevitable that they were going to pass, these Brendan Huntley were going to pass. I didn't know, but I didn't know. And when I saw the clippings where and Boise and Huntley walk with his wife and mom to the head table. And hearing the shocking news and the follow up. But thank God they stay. The Lord is here and He is here to comfort. And so I want to say, Boise and kids, keep heart. The Lord loves you. He died to save you. He died to save the family. He died to save us all. And so we have to give comfort, families, and friends. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Um, let me first extend my condolences to boys and my friend and the girls. I really, really love these people. But I'm standing with mixed feelings, but I'm happy. Um, Brenda, to me, is one of the most vibrant Christian I've ever come and the most radical human being that I've ever met. Uh, growing up, we fellowship here, myself and two of my friends. We spend time with them, so I know her. And she reminds me so much of my mom. And I am happy that I met her. I visited her during her sickness. But what stood out for me that she said, Tamar, amidst my sickness when I'm out, I've never forgot that I'm a Christian. And I've not forgotten my pastor. You know, and that stood out for me that no matter the challenge and what we go through in the physical, the devil can't just touch the physical, but he dare not touch the spiritual man that is wrapped up in God. And so, boys, you know her desire. I'm just going to remind you today that she wants you to walk with Jesus. Don't let the enemy steal you no more. Just walk with Jesus. Because I want to tell you, I don't matter what he has done to them, as long as he the fix up, and we pray for him during this kind of sickness. So we know, unless he did not fix up, but we know where that fix up. And I am of that assurance that if you fix up, boys, when we get there on the other side, come on, you may not have her as your wife, because there is no wife in that beautiful place that we're going to go. But I tell you, she will be there. If you want to be there, you better get fixed up. That is her desire. We spent hours on the veranda and she has never left out. No matter what is happening, Boise, give yourself back to Jesus. Because on the other side is beauty. There will be no sickness. Come on. There will be no sorrow. No more death. All will be victory. And we will have the triumph of death. Walking in our immortal body. Brenda, rest well, my friend. I'm glad I meet you. Don't fail her. She had high expectation. Wait on your husband. Wait on Jesus. I will be standing to be Brenda B. Don't let her down. She has high expectation. God bless you. We have lost in the flesh, but she leave enough in the spirit to her. So we can triumph and be victorious. Rise up and let the enemy know. They have not lost, we have gained. Because we have 
a legacy of spiritual discipline in Brenda Williams, a radical woman for God. God bless you. God bless you. family members, well wishes, greetings. I don't know the disease, but I am associated with Teresa, with Teresa. And of course, when you miss Teresa down here, she is in my church in Paisley, where I pastor and they also the assistant overseer for the Western region. Amen. I want Pastor Knight to know that I am not a sheep stealer. 
I'm like the sheep stealers. So, you know, don't be afraid. All right? She only visit us because she is living in the community. Amen. So I don't have much to say about these people, but I'm going to try and sing something. Amen. 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 Can you allow me? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord? By and by, oh, there's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Oh, will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord?
Hallelujah. 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 We'll be seated. Greetings to Pastor Knight and my colleague, Minister. Oh boy. I have been all over the place in the last few days. My dear wife and I have been very much busy on mission, mission in Manchester. We left Manchester yesterday evening and end up in Montego Bay last night and came back to West Milan this morning. Hallelujah. And she's gone to do another kind of ministry and I'm here. Oh my God. But God has been keeping us. Yes, dear dear pastor, Pastor Ned had to rescue me. Came down from Manchester just this week. Hallelujah. But we are on the battlefield for our God. Yeah. Amen. I want to greet you all in the mighty, matchless, and powerful name of our Lord Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Brenda Williams. What a woman. What a woman. I, I, I have met Henley. I mean, I know him so good. You know? Yeah. But, 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 but Brenda. Oh, God. Me guess I mean, Brenda, a friend. I mean, Johnny from lately. Me just come from the scene recently. And if me and Brenda are friends, I mean, Brenda, everybody has friends. Hallelujah. Yes. When me walk in a hammer, to go buy anything. We don't know where Brenda come from. But by the time me here, I mean, but to get served, it's Brenda that. I don't think anybody else in, in the place ever served me yet. Because she always want to be the one to serve me. Yes. Let me tell you something. Brenda is a woman of God. And you know me like about her? No matter what I'm to her, she never looks sad. Never. You don't know. You don't know. Ever smile. Ever give her a little joke. Very humorous. My God, what a woman. And I miss her. I don't know who else does, but I will miss her. Amen. And so I want to just express uh, to. Oh boy, I tell you. Can I tell you something? I have an idea what my brother is going to do. Yeah. It's just that he is a little older than I was when he came to me. As young as I am, I have already lost a wife by then. We know how it feels. And so I can understand to some extent what he's going through. But I want to just, you know, express condolence to him, to Teresa, to Natalia, and the rest of the family. Amen? Amen. Yes, those two girls. If 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 Brenda, let me put it the other way. If if what I see in Natalia and Teresa is anything to go by, then Brenda is one of the most, is one of the champion mothers in this world. Amen. Amen. Yes. When I go to Bashko, just like Brenda. Teresa always wanted to at home. Did you just tell me one? Sure. Just tell me one. All right. And then of course Natalia is my assistant and everything. You know, some of you were in Nazareth Church and was a the district secretary for a while. Yes. And when we have any big thing and want somebody to assist, we ever call Natalia, whether she be a college or wherever. And we ever say yes. yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So God bless you all as we continue to celebrate the life of Brenda. Amen. Amen. And we read it really a, 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 a sad occasion to know that mother and son have to be laid to rest at the same time. But God knows this. Amen. Amen. God bless you all in Jesus. I'm going home to Jesus in the twinkling of the dark. I'm with my dear son, I'm with my
I had much, much more memories of her, but as we sing, we know that she's in a better place. And as Bubbles said, if you tell us the funky party, yes, yeah, so at this time we go. Alright. I went to the house where Cookie used to live. The grass had grown up and covered the door.
from Reverend Custom. So the family will sing up this time. It should be followed by the youth. It's me again, Lord, with a prayer, I need an answer. It's me again, Lord, with a problem I cannot solve. I don't need to bother you. I have something that I must do.
to me. I will give you rest. Set your soul at ease. When you're hurt and distressed, you can lean on me. Come rest your head on my shoulder. Shall the free 
before he told us that he was sick I was at home in Mobe and I always I always say um, when mama died mama should come to me and, and, and show me certain things and all of that but mama came to me in a dream before would you tell us tell us that he was sick and after I had that dream I felt it in my spirit that Mochi was going to be in the hospital and he's going to die. And I told my husband and I told Talia and Talia said, no, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. Pray against it. I started praying. I, I, I went on three days fasting. And when I went on three days fasting, God said to me, why are you fasting? And you're not speaking to your mother and your father. Because um, we had a little argument and I tell them my mind. That's it with me. I'm going to tell you my mind when you go wrong. And I don't care if you want to like me or not. I'm going to tell you my mind. So when I, I, I got the feeling and I went on fasting, I tell God, don't take my brother. Take me. Take me instead because my brother has so much purpose. So much purpose than me. And... I was there and after coming out of the fasting, I made it up with my mother and my father. I made it up and I got the vision to their call me and, and I saw Mochi everything that was happening and, and I could not tell, I could not do anything and then um, I came down, my husband went to the car and I came down and that was the last time I saw mommy I came down with the car and I drive her out. And that look on her face made her proud of me. I remembered I went to sister, um, our cousin Paulette. And when I went to Paulette, Paulette had um, Keisha on the phone from Bahamas. And Keisha said to me, Terry, when you go up, kiss Brenda for me. And many of you know the relationship between me and mommy is sometimes up, sometimes down. And, I went ahead when I reached up and I saw mommy in the bathroom, just finished using the bowl. I hugged her and I kissed her. That's the last time I saw mommy. The last time I saw mommy. I keep on praying. I keep on praying. I'm praying that Mochi wouldn't succumb to what I was feeling. 
Jerusalem. I felt it again two weeks before he died again. And I told my husband I feel much of it. And he told me nothing will happen. He will recover. He will recover. He will recover. But growing up in the church, I I I, I learned that God had everything worked out. God had everything planned. And what happened now is his plan. I'm going to take them for my brother. I know they can't feel Muji. 
chose. I, 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 I have much sick and I felt it before and I don't know if he had waited for me to come down because when I came down the Sunday, I went and looked for him. And when I looked for him, he was like tired. And he said, take the baby, go home. Like he was tired, he don't want to hear the noise or stuff. And I felt bad. I felt bad. But if someone don't know when they have one dark side, I'm kind of feel. So I was angry with Mochi that he told me to go home. And I, I prayed and I forgave him. And I went to work Monday, came back home to Lagood. And Tuesday, Tuesday was over yard, um, straighten up and thing like that. Because mommy always like when we do that. She always, because I remember, I think, Christmas, last year Christmas, mommy called me and said, Terry, yeah, come down. Mama, you go straighten up my house. Mama, you go tidy up my house. I said, Mommy, we have my house to tidy up, but Mommy, yeah, we have work and everything. I'm tired. You can't manage it. So, Tuesday when Mochi died, I was over by the yard. Straightened up and thing. And I didn't know he was in Pampers. So I found some of Mommy um, bed pads. And the spirit said to me, Go and bring it to him. Stop working. Start working and bring them to him. And when I went down there, he was sitting on the bed, trying to drink um, Gatorade and water. Pat was giving it to him and it was coming out and I take the rod from him and catch it. And when I was doing that, he lay down. He said, it can't pass. The water or the Gatorade couldn't pass here. And Pansy come in the room saying to me, Pansy, we cannot keep him home. We better bring him to the hospital. I was looking at my brother. I went over here and I was staring him in his eyes. And I said, brother, please go in the spirit and kneel down and ask God to fix you. Ask him to fix you. And he was just looking like this. I went, I went up back and I get ready to carry them to start the hospital. Me and Pat, me and him and Pat, we went to the hospital. He was there, he was there saying that his back is this. So me and Pat keep on turning him, setting this way, setting that way. Till the last minute, me and Pat turned aside and we were talking. I remember look, we see the different change in Mochi. And me and Pat started assisting him. Pat was talking in his ears and said, Mochi, move this, let me know that you understand or you're hearing me. And he was only shaking his hands like that. And by the time we looked, the breath went. The breath went. I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss them. What they have left a part in me. They have left a special part in me. Special part. They have grown me right. And uh, before I came, come down, I want to thank, I want to thank, I want to thank each and every one of you families and friends. I remember when Mochi was sick and Mochi said to me, Terry, I would be ungrateful if I'm worrying. I am not worrying because I didn't know that so many people like me, so many people love me. He said he never know, but he's not worrying. He's not worrying. And today, I want to say, 
thank you to each and every one of you who are here right now. Thank you. Thank you. Even those who are abroad, you don't know how much I appreciate you guys. Whether in words, in anything at all that you have done for my brother and my mother. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I leave it to God. I leave it to God. You might think I'm, I'm a, maybe an unsaved or something, but um, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. And I leave it to God. Their souls are resting in peace. Their souls are resting in peace. Thank you. Amen. You have to be a with them, you know. You have to be a with them. Not because they might be having the weather or support. They rush them, please. I've been through it two times. I love my parents. I've been through it, and there are a lot of others who are in here. I've been through it. I have a lot of relatives in this community. Some people will say, if I know auntie, if I know the auntie or the brother or the sister, it will fall. We have knowledge and catch them a fifth generation. But you have some that go like, because they're not, you know, you know, I'm Maxwell, and because my brother is not at Maxwell, we don't recognize them. But they have four sides to a family, your mother, your father, and they have for their mother and their father, and they have different names. So I acknowledge everybody. We don't know who wants me at too much for, but you see, you know, very like good here. They enough, they enough, they enough, so too. And I just want to please, I mean, I beg you know, those of you who have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Me and Maxwell and Rose, you know, Maxwell and Rose and Williams and Miles. Amen. Amen. But I'm asking you, please, may I beg you know, those of you who have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, do it before it is too late. Amen. There's a song that says, Cure the soul, or heed the warning, or your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. Unprepared to meet that God. The choir will be singing at this time, the preacher will come. And then after that, we'll have the two eulogies, the two eulogies. Run from my planet, watch you bring the blood. To spread your strength in the Lord. And one from Moesha. Yeah. Right. Moesha for Henry and Natalia for Ben. church 
she started coming as a child with her grandfather by the Miller side. What was his name again, Doreen? Bamba. Eh? So as, as, as Brenda grew, she, she became fully involved in, in youth and summer school activities. And you know, as we are a lot of young people, you go outside and all of those things, what you want to enjoy. But on becoming an adult and, you know, getting her kids, she answered the call and fully committed to God and started her role in ministries of youth and Sunday school departments. She also functioned as, as trustee on the church board and supported me as assistant secretary from time to time, I remember one meeting I wasn't here. When I came back, she said, Hey, Maureen, see, put that in, you know, send me right, but we can't remember, we, we can't make out on the right, so somebody have to go work it out. That, that was Brenda. But um, she was always present at church trips, you know, and was one of the top, one of the top entertainers. When my father was alive, they were partners in keeping us entertained. And outreach, which is an important part of, of the ministry, she was involved, always going as far as Manchester with Sister Vivian. So to summarize, a most impactful contribution from Sister Brenda was that she was a praying mother. Always passionate about her children, not just hers. She bought with everybody. I remember one time when I, she would told her that, oh, she had finish her bachelor's and she go into her master's. Brenda Ball, she bought, she bought so till. She was so happy. That is how she felt about, you know, our children. Because all, all the kids here are nieces and nephews. And so um, she was a ball, as you would have heard. We've been wailing. And so we want to really keep that, that memory for Sister Brenda. I'm going to make it short in the interest of time. All right, Sister Carlo. Amen. However, um... For those who do not know, she met in an accident, freak, called a freak accident, where she got burnt as a teenager. And she always testified that God gave her three kids with one breast. And she raised them and she talked about that boy with born, what, foot away, so much of it born. So the boy born reaching out, boy special man, but the boy born. That was Sister Brenda. And so, um, other than her three children, Terrell and Rahim, oh my God, her treasures. Rahim of your Pitney, you know. I know she born him and my cousin born him, but after Brenda Pitney. And she always said, we must pray for them. And she asked that, she always testified that she want God to keep her to see Talia graduate with her degree. If nothing else, she wants to Talia graduate with her degree. And when the time comes, she said, you know, they're never going to make me go in, but we want to go in, we want to go. And we're happy that God allowed Brenda to see her little baby girl walking down the aisle in her cave. And another blessing is that Muchi was there as well, right? Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And so, um, some things I won't repeat because they have already been, been sent. And I want us to also keep Raheem in our prayers. That's Brenda's well, fourth picnic, or the fifth one. As you know, um, he has an uncle yet to be buried. His grandfather, right? My uncle. His grandfather is yet to be buried, and some one or two months ago, grandmother was lost by that side, and then his auntie. So it's, as all the other I say, a triple five, five times. So it's a lot. He's not doing well on the outside. So keep them all in your prayers. And Talia and Sister Terry know that we have her back. And I'm happy that you're so involved in the music because Sister Brenda was a no nonsense person. If the job of planning now, play good, he said, not happy. Can't walk, can't walk, can't walk. Music of it good for Brenda. And when music sweet are, you can't do no cool and really better than her, you know. And you can't scan better than Brenda, you know. That is Brenda. Before technology was advanced, she had the book them. As you hear one song, she said, no one, nothing, no, write it down, give me. So she always have her collection. Before I heard um, Panty talk about Tom Jive, a man, Panty have her book Jive. Which is wow, oh, that's Brenda with her books there. So so much, so much. Brenda was passionate for God. Any convention she goes, she not going like this touch. She had testified. If she get the chance, she go two times she ago. 
That is how passionate she was. One time, one of the years we were having convention, and she come and say, oh, me? Me tell doctor say no, me discharge myself. When convention don't me come back, they can't readmit me. Convention be gone. That is how passionate she was. And so we are really going to miss her. There's a lot more um, I have here, which I will not go into, but I can tell you that her legacy lives on. The love for her church, um, the love that she has for her nieces and nephews, the love for music, and most of all, her dedication to the work of God. So sleep on Sister Brenda, sleep on our former Sunday school student, Muchi. We love you and we will continue to support your children and your grandchildren, your grandchildren and nieces and nephews and fancy and everybody. God bless you. Thank you. And we can't say one better end then. So Brenda, no, 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 daddy, daddy business, you know. She not in that. All right, so we are going to try and encourage the, um, the everybody. Hi, Yeah. 
I never forget. She came one Sunday and told me she was in the hospital. And when she woke up, she heard all kind of sound and noise and some boys and make noise and curse words over so. So when Panzi came to look for her, she, she said, Panzi, Panzi, tell me something. I want me to hear this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Brother said, Panzi, I hear me there. Take me out. <laughs> Take me out. I said, discharging herself because she's not still on my hell. We know what the boy make nice and behave bad. Brenda was just full of fun and excitement. May her soul rest in peace. Preach from the word of the Lord. In the book of St. Luke, chapter number 13. I read a few verses for you. And I can close the Bible up because I'm short. They were present at that season. Some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Number four. Of those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your words. We appreciate the written words. Lord, we come to you now and we ask that you will speak even through the spoken words. The word of the Lord said that any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God so that you through him will be glorified. Speak today from this speaking place in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. A call to repentance. The text tells us that many came to Jesus and presented to him two different scenarios to get his response. In both ways, Jesus responded the very same way. Firstly, they told him about the Galileans whose blood they said Pilate mingled him in sacrifice. Yeah. However, on 
whatever Pilate uses the blood of the people. He made sacrifice with them. We don't know how many persons were killed or Pilate killed in order to make sacrifice. But the truth is, the text tells us that many persons, many Galileans were sacrificed. And they asked Jesus, those who were sacrificed, what do you think about it? Don't you think that these were probably some wicked men who deserve to die in this way? Jesus said to them, I want you to understand this, that unless you repent, you are going to die one day. Whether Pilate sacrificed you or not, you're going to die. Number two. They said to Jesus, Sir, the tower fell and killed 18 people. 18. What do you think about those 18 who died? Don't you think that they were corrupt people? Don't you think that they were wicked people? Don't you think that the reason why they died was because they were evil people? Jesus said to them, the fact that the power fell on them and they died, doesn't mean that they were wicked more than anybody else. But except you repent, you are going to die just the same. Are you with me? Follow me. In one, the first scenario, the death of the individuals were caused by by Pilate. Pilate sacrificed them. In the second scenario, the death were caused by some natural phenomenon. The tower fell down and killed them. So Jesus was showing them that, listen, whether you die naturally or whether you die tragically, you're still going to die. Are you following me? If you drive and you crash and you die, you're still dead. And if they shot you, like what we heard happened in Upton Wickham yesterday, and you die by a bullet, guess what happened? You're still what? You're still dead. And if cancer kills you, guess what? You're still dead. And if arthritis fix you nice, because arthritis of a way, I call it arthritis. Because some of my nice friends and family may not like arthritis because it's not fix them. Good. They make people walk all kind of way alone. So whether it's arthritis or crumbritis. Whatever right is kill 
it's us because guess what? We're gonna die one day. Are you with me? It does not matter. That's the context of the presentation Jesus is making. It does not matter how you die. You are going to die one day. Number three, whether you die young, like Muchi, or you die a little older, like Brenda, are you with me? Guess what? They're right here before us today. The young is going to die, and the old is going to what? To die. Whether you want to die or you don't want to die, you still have one day. Am I talking to anybody? Some of us don't really want to die. Nobody wants to die, true? Especially Christian people. Are we really should be ready. Nobody in the high front did like we. Not sure. I want to go to heaven and I'm I'm tired of staying down here. I'm tired of the troubles and trials. I want to go to heaven and rest. As soon as them heads start to hurt them, why, Pastor? Feel like in the day. We're not really ready. Am I talking to anybody? We were really not ready to go on. What is it that we're holding on to? Some people have cars, some people have house, some people have money, some people have land, some people have mochi, some people have Brenda, yes, children and mother. But guess what? The point is, Jesus told them, I want you to understand this. That you are going to die one day. Whether it comes naturally or whether it comes accidentally, you are going to what? To die. Glory to God. And follow me and let me close this off. Jesus says it's not just about dying. Unless you repent, you shall like wise what? <laughs> you shall like wise. <laughs> repent. Interestingly, the word means to change your mind and as a result of changing your mind you change your direction so it's a change of mind which results in a what a change of direction metanoia is the Greek word ladies and gentlemen I want us to understand because Two caskets in the one church at the same time. And all kind of saying will be there because of this and because of that. And because of this one. All kind of saying. I don't know about your story, but maybe you hear one. Because everybody have a different story. Am I going to talk to you? But whatever your story may be, 
Whether it's a Longwood story or a Wickham story or a Westmoreland story. Or a old road story or a Talia story. Or a Shrewsbury story. Whatever the story that you hear. Guess what? The dead. And whatever the story may be, Jesus says, except you repent, you too. Repent, or you are going to what? Die. So I want to help you to do today. Ladies and gentlemen, mother is before us and son is before us. Whatever the story you heard, I'm probably choose to believe. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. All of us are going one day. All of us. And there will be a story behind all of us. Pastor will have one. You will have one. And all of us are going to have a story. Jesus says, Regardless of what comes behind your death, it is important that you repent because you are going to what? To die. And therefore advising us, whether you are younger, like Muchi, or even a little younger, or whether you are older, like Brenda, or a little older, guess what? It's not your time yet, because you're here today. <laughs> but maybe next week, or the other week, or the other week, or next month, or the other month, we will be gathering somewhere on an occasion like this putting you away <laughs> for dig and some time to steal us away dig and some time to steal us away dig and some time to steal us away Your life has no meaning. 
if you are going to find true meaning and value for your life, you must see Jesus. Hallelujah. You must see Jesus. Because Jesus says, except you repent, you are going to do what? Perish. Seek him the Lord. While he is there. Call him by him. While he may be found. I pray today that those of you who have not yet truly repented, turn away from your sins that you will do so before the time of too late. For Jesus wants, and I want to warn you again, except you repent, you shall like what? It is important not just to walk and to live, but to make sure that your life is hid with Christ in God. Repent. 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 And hell is real. And it's either one place or the other. I beg you today, whoever you are, wherever you came from, repent before. me to push this message. I want you to help me. The person next door to you, I just want you to touch the person and say, repent. Come on, talk to me. Tell somebody, say, repent. Touch the other person on the other side. Just say, repent.
In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Money, every God Almighty thing. 
The only thing that was on me was my phone and my passport. That bag had everything. And when I went back to the airport, not a single thing was missing from the bag. And the friend said, through your storm, use this to know that God is with you. And the whole funeral, this is what has been happening. God has been coming through from left, right, and center. And look in the community. If you look in the community, you're seeing people you have never seen for years. Muchi and Brenda is united love right now. Because those, they were persons of good heart. And I looked at them yesterday, you know, dressed up and everything, and I came out laughing at everything. I spent my birthday at the funeral home, and it was probably one of the best, best part of the birthday. So, I don't know what will happen after this whole process, but I am glad that God is with me through all of this, and it's with the family through all of this. So let me go ahead with the yoga chick for Brenda Lynn Williams. Proverbs 31 verse 30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Brenda Lynn was definitely a Proverbs 31 woman. I remember telling a friend some time ago that I would like to write a biography for my mother with her assistance because I am always amazed whenever I hear bits of stories about the struggles she overcame throughout her life. In writing and sharing this eulogy, it will be my attempt to share a concise version of her story, only that she's not here to hear it. Brenda Lynn Anita Williams was born on January 27, 1964, to parents Clyde Advara Vassal and Octavius Alexander Vassal in Shrewsbury, London. Clyde and Octavius Union produced, produced seven children. Brenda Lynn was the eldest girl for Clyde and Octavius. She attended Shrewsbury, London, DCI, then went on to Petersville Primary School and then on to South Senior, now known as Godfrey Stewart High. She was severely burned from an incident with a torch. She then had to relocate from that school as she did not want her friends to see her in that state. She met her lo the love of her life, Edward Williams. The union produced three wonderful children, Teresa Williams, Henley Williams, and myself, Natalia Williams. In the utterances of one of her testimonies in church, she shared, Three pitney, but only one breast. As she lost one of her breasts in the fire incident. She extended love also to Everard's eldest child, Tanya. She worked at Nutrition Products Limited in Shrewsbury, known as Bond Factory, for eight years. She later went on to Hammond Space Limited for 10 years. She was laid off due to her illness in 2011. Throughout her time working at these organizations, I know she made lifelong friends of whom I know are sitting in this audience today and even online and has been, on her, has been by her side throughout her lifetime. The name Cookie was bestowed upon her by her former boss, the late Russell Harmon, who passed sometime last year whom I know for sure if was still living would also be here today. On the news of his passing, passing, it took me days before I could share with her as I know that would rest on her mind. When I finally shared, she would always share with everyone, the boss said me home and went on before me. She also shared respectful relationships with her customers from the least to the greatest. Everybody knew about Cookie. I cannot go to Sam one day without somebody seeing me and asking how Cookie. But when her sickness took place, she did not want to be called Cookie anymore because she said she cannot go in the kitchen. So she said, don't call me no Cookie, call me Brownie. So we forgot to put that on it. So cookie and Brownie. Sorry, mommy. 
My mother was one of the best cooks I know. I remember visiting her workplace at Hammond's Pastry and seeing Mr. Hammond's rolling in and saying, Cookie, food ready? Fix me up there. She made the best caramel puddings, which was sold like hot bread. Anytime she would have a big sale day or if you were special enough to just be favored with a piece of fuel. I had never attempted to make a caramel pudding, pudding because I knew it would not come close to hers. Daddy tried, Terry tried, but I just settled with making banana bread, which was her absolute favorite. I regret not baking one before I left, as she did always ask, bake one before you leave, whether I go to school or whether I go abroad. My mother was a big support to my education journey. She pushed to ensure I achieved the best and I am glad that she was able to see me attain all those achievements. As I read this, I remember one day I was online and the lecturer was asking, anybody can give the answer to that? And we just sit down there for some time. We're online and we don't want to. Even if we know the answer, we don't want to say anything. And Brenda sit down there and listen and say, answer again, answer, answer. <laughs> we don't want to answer. So she was always there, and during the online time, she was there to make sure she made it focus and going through all the doors. There was even a time where I was just on class doing my work and she had a seizure. I, the struggle with her with the sickness, it was a lot, back, but God was with me also, and the, the school family from Bethlehem has always been a big support and if you realize some for me also because in my final year of study I had prioritized everything for mommy. I told them let me do practicum in West Milan because I want to be close to mommy. Otherwise I would have to do practicum in St. Elizabeth. But I was given the opportunity to, to be in in West Milan so I can come home in the days when I leave school and be there for her. So when they heard that she died, everybody poured in their support because they know I made the sacrifices. I remember vividly one time she visited me on campus and while the car was leaving, outside the door, she waved and looked up on the windows and waved and said, shaking her head as you know she would. Hello and bye to everyone who knows me. Her smile stands firm in my memory of the day I walked down the hall in May at my valedictory service. Because Auntie Pansy never see me, Terry never see me, but Mommy saw me. She saw me first and she was just there smiling. And her smile as she saw me walking down was everything. Her smile will be unforgettable as that was the last thing she did for me as she waved goodbye, waved goodbye as she dropped me off at the airport and to accompany me to the airport it was Muchi's desire Muchi said make sure that I am my mom and come to the airport what you said and even as we drove out, don't you think, Mommy did it? Say so, yeah. And we were late. I was really late and I ran out the carry and not ran out the ambulance drive and ran out the hang on the road. I was never late for my flight. But I did not get to hug her because the rain was coming and I had to go and check in. But I waved and she waved and smiled. So that will be the last my mother. And when they asked, when they called and they asked, do I want to see her? I said yes. And when they put the camera on her, what, what pleased my heart was that her hairstyle, everybody knows me, can't come here for the love of me. But I always try to do more this here. Her hairstyle was what comforted my heart because 
I did her hairstyle and I sacrificed everything because time was running out on me as I was supposed to prepare my packing and everything. But I did her hair and seeing her, her hairstyle, that was probably one of the best plaits she got and that comforted my heart. There was a time we would, con we would contemplate who was her favorite child. To me, it was always Butchie. To Terry, it was always between Butchie and I. But she definitely went all out for her children. But maybe it's Butchie, because he, she took her <laughs> In 2010, she received a stroke which started a turmoil. From dealing with series of seizures and high blood pressure, she would always be grateful to be alive. Whenever she, she was told she had a seizure, she would always say, Mommy, can you never take a picture? Mommy, can you never record it so we could have seen it? And you know, a lot of times, I remember a few times I do I the video, I take things to see the actions and or to show to somebody what I am experiencing. And I never showed it to her. Because I don't want her to see it. But it would always frustrate me sometimes. She would have to see you in the night and in the morning where the active are ready to take on the world. The last picture I have in my phone of Brenda was was when she was outside sweeping the yard and and I said, Brenda, come in. She's not here. It was the song. She's not here. And I took up the phone and I took her picture with a flash. And I said, Brenda, I'm going to send it to Mochi and tell me to say, tell us to come in and you're not coming. She dropped the ring. Same time, I went in. On June 8th, she made her final departure from Earth. It was a shock to many of us, yes, but one thing I can always say about my mother, she lived every day as it was her last. At her last birthday party in January, she was telling everyone the funeral postponed, no matter then. <laughs> but it was postponed for now. I will miss coming home and calling out, Brenda Lynn! And she would reply, present. She died leaving her husband, Everard Williams, two daughters, Teresa Williams and Natalia Williams, son, Henry Williams, who is now deceased, stepdaughter, Tanya Williams, two sisters, five brothers, grandchildren, Raheem, Terrell, and Silvana, nieces, nephews, other relatives and friends. Sweet one, Brenda Lee. Mommy, Cookie, Brownie, we love you, but I believe God lent you to us and now it is time for you to go. Rest on as you go down with your king. You're one boy. I absolutely love you both and will never let you go. I don't know how I'm going to manage my official graduation is in November. <laughs> but I will that well, we'll be dedicate, dedicating that degree to both of them. I will be. Thanks to family and friends. You I even have some my second best friend there, she came in this morning from Guyana. From Guyana, but she's from Marvelous. Praise on worship, guy. He's from Ghana. I have friends who are standing with me, and family who are standing with me, who have just come down for a few days just because of the two of them. And on behalf of the family, we absolutely thank you, guys.
Good afternoon, everyone. So I am Alicia. Um, Henley's stepdaughter. Henley George Williams, born on November the 4th, 1984, as the second child and only male to parents, Everett William and Brenda Lynn Williams in Schubert, West Virginia. Being the only brother to three sisters, Henley grew up as a nurturer and a protector. Henley started his educational journey at the Schubert Lagoon Early Childhood Institution, then went to Petersfield Primary and Infant School. He completed his educational journey at Petersfield Comprehensive School, now known as Petersfield High. One thing for sure, Henley was always a man that loved to work and would not sit down. He worked for several years at Big M Hardware, then went to Sandals Negret. He later met the love of his wife, Patricia Jones, and moved to Kingston. There he did landscaping, every little thing, and nothing was too hard for him. He later learned the trade of carpentry and worked with a number of construction companies while there. He is known to many as a helpful and per-hearted soul, very determined. Whenever, whenever he sets his mind on doing something, and will never stop until it is done. The death of his mother was a heavy burden as he had a major plan to make her well and happy. There was so much he wanted to do for her. Muchi, otherwise known as Bim, was a family man. He loved his family dearly and would go above and beyond for them. Not only his family, but people in his surroundings, community and co-workers can attest to the above, to the above and beyond mentality of Bim, otherwise known as Punchy. From raiding the entire logwood to ensuring he goes up to Kingston with fruits and food of, any, of many kind once in season. Whether bus, taxi, rental, or personal vehicle, he's going to ensure that he walks with a full load. And one thing for sure, the whole Kingston is going to get their share. Even while sourcing the goods here in logwood, he will still give out to those who ask. Henley loved football. He played his early life from high school and also played community football. It is though football he was given the alias thing. Over the years, he however resorted to being a huge football fan, England. <laughs> he was one of the baddest chefs and ever ready to cook up some hot Hugged and some steamed fish, whenever it was. He was always ready. He died leaving his father, Everett Williams, three sisters, Tania Williams, Teresa Williams, Natalia Williams, his son, Ryan Williams, fiance, Patricia Jones, stepdaughter, aunties, uncles, and other relatives and friends. Words cannot express the grief we feel at your untimely loss. It still feels unbelievable to take into reality that you are no longer with us. There are so many voids that are empty since you left us. We are, however, grateful that you live a great life and your memories I'm grateful that you lived a great life and your memories and evidence of your hard work are here with us. We love you dearly. We, however, try to understand that God only thing, God only lends you to us and your time of appointment has come. Thank you.
very, very much. And we are almost there. You are doing very, very well. Prayer for the bereaved family is up next. We are going to... Wow. Um, let me ask the bereaved family to stand, those who are connected, related to Emily and Brenda. I'm going to ask you to please stand wherever you are. We want to offer prayer on your behalf. We invite your Mary to come and to pray that prayer for us. Please stand, please stand. Very family, please stand. Shall we pray?
on behalf of a family that have lost two and are being buried together on the same day in the same sanctuary and in the same grave. Lord, help the William family. Lord, we pray that you continue to comfort them. We pray, God, that you continue to strengthen them. We pray, Lord, that you continue to give them peace. Lord, very important we pray that you give them unity. Lord, there are times when families are torn to pieces because of a death. And so, God, we are thanking you that it appears as though the family is united. But, Lord, we pray for more unity. As they go forward in the days and the weeks and the months and the years to come, as they wrestle with the fact that two important members of the family are gone. Lord, be with them. We ask you to provide for them, Lord, where that is necessary. Father, we know that there are many members of the family who have said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and are serving him. But Lord, we also know that there are some who have not yet done so. And Lord, to the extent that that is so, we pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to them even now. And the Lord, even the death of their loved ones will help to bring them closer to you, God, so that they will come to that point in their life and come to that place where they acknowledge you as Lord and they accept the Lord Jesus Christ so that their life from God can be lived happily in, and they can enjoy peace with Christ. And then their time comes that they lay, the bodies lay in a casket like oh, the Lord, we can rejoice. Those who are adopted, those who can rejoice. And we pray, Lord, that this situation will be of such that later, Lord, somebody will say, Boy, we miss Brenda, we miss Henry, but it was good that they died because we have come to know the Lord as a result. Father, take charge now and take control and have your own sweet way. And we leave the millions from the inheritance. And we call it done because you have taken charge of it. Thank you, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are on our way out. Please don't go. Don't just march out like that. We really want to end properly. Remember that the services we take. Please, just help me with the discipline and say we're done. We're going to ask you, please don't come up into the aisle at this time. Just remain where you are, in your, in your seats. We're going to need the aisle just to come down. The pastors are going to exit the platform party. The choir is going to then come behind, then the caskets will come behind the choir, and the family members will immediately come behind the casket, and then everybody else will follow. All right? So we're going to ask um, the Paul bearers to come, family and friends, those who will just be guiding the casket out. Let me invite the officials also to come. I'm um, hoping that the caskets are already in the right, correct position. However, the 
from the expertise in that and they will be guiding us. So, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way for the hand of God in all my life I see and the reason of my bliss yes, the secret all is this that the comforter abides with me. Please, everybody, just stand and remain in your place as we exit in fine style. Thank you for your cooperation. You have been very, very good and supportive, and we appreciate it. Acknowledgement. The family of the late Henry Williams and Brenda Williams wishes to express sincere gratitude to all relatives and friends and well-wishers for their kind support, prayers, visit, telephone calls, that which assures us that we were not alone in our time of bereavement. May God richly richest blessings be with you all. Amen. Joyce in light and day as I walk the narrow way for the hand of God in all my life I see and the reason of my lips yes the secret of my lips and the comfort